What's up guys, this is Jake and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can set up a Shopify store from complete scratch, step by step, from start to finish. So with that said, let's get, just go ahead and jump right into the video. So in order to get started, you're going to need to start your free trial with Shopify. So if you haven't yet, you can click the first link in the description down below to start your free trial with Shopify. And if you use the link in the description, then you'll be able to get Shopify for three months for just $1 per month for the first three months. So if you wanna get this offer, be sure to go through the link in the description down below. And I would recommend building your store side by side along with this video. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. So with that said, once you click the link and get to this page right here, you're just gonna to have to enter your email address. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So once you enter your email address, you're going to be asked some questions right here. Most of these you can actually just skip through. So I'm actually just going to skip all of them for the sake of this video. And then we just have to choose where our business is located, which in this case, it's going to be the United States. And then it's going to go ahead and create our store for us right here. So once our store is created, it's going to take us into the Shopify admin right here. So the first thing that we're going to get acquainted with here is the admin itself. So everything that you're going to need is going to be over here on the left. So you're going to be able to navigate through all of the primary elements of your Shopify store through these links over here. So you have all of your admin stuff from here, from home down to discounts. You have your sales channels which is going to be just different places that you're selling your products that are going to show up right here. And then you're going to have apps, which show up down here, which we don't have any apps yet, but we'll talk about apps later in this video as well. So the first thing we actually want to do is head to settings and we're going to set up some general settings before we actually get into the store itself. Open up settings and we're going to see some basic information here. And we have our store name right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit here. And this is where we can actually change our store name. So in this case, I'll just call it YouTube store for the video, but this is where you can actually edit your store name here. And then you can change things like your currency, your time zone, and you can add in a prefix to your order ID. So by default, your orders are going to be like 1001, 1002. But if you want to put in something like YS, for a YouTube store for a prefix here, you can do that as well. This is pretty much only going to come into play if you have multiple stores. So the next thing we're gonna look at in settings is setting up our payments because this is going to be one of the most important parts of setting up your e-commerce store is making sure that you can actually accept payments so people can actually purchase products from your store. So I do have a separate video on all of the different payment options that you can use, which I'll link in the description, but to keep it very simple for this video, for 99% of people, all you're going to need to do is activate Shopify payments right here. So this is going to allow you to accept all major credit and debit cards. And then you can choose to activate PayPal right here as well. And this will help give you some additional international coverage where a lot of international buyers might prefer to use PayPal. So if you use Shopify payments and PayPal, you're pretty much going to have a large amount of customers covered just by using these two payment providers. Now, if you're in a different country where Shopify payments isn't available, then I would recommend checking out my payments video where I go through all of the different alternatives. Definitely go ahead and activate Shopify payments right here. All you have to do is fill out a little bit of information about your business which only takes a couple of seconds and you'll be approved right away and then you can set up paypal payments just by linking a paypal account right here or having one created so after we've set up payments there's only one more thing we're going to do in settings before we actually get into setting up the store itself so if we come down here to domains we can see that by default we have this my shopify domain next thing we want to set up is a custom branded domain name as using this my Shopify domain name right here on a live store is definitely not a good look. And using a branded domain name is not only more professional looking, but it can actually lead to more traffic and sales because the brand optics are going to be very important. So I would recommend setting up your domain name quickly as soon as you open up your store because you definitely want to have a professional one set up before you actually go live. And when it comes to choosing a domain name, I would recommend using a .store domain name 
A dot store domain name is a good way to stand out from other websites and let people know right away that your website is an online store that is specifically focused on selling products. Many people searching for products online are already adding in the term store at the end of many searches, so having this as a part of your domain is a natural fit and helps let potential visitors know that your website is an online store that sells products and not just a blog or informational website. Not to mention the SEO benefits of having a common high intent keyword like store in your domain name. Data from a study comparing e-commerce website performance showed dot .store domains get 2.1x more impressions, 1.7x more clicks, and a 12% lower CPA than their .com counterparts. A lot of top brands and influencers already use a dot .store domain name such as Rihanna, Mr. Beast, Discord, Emirates, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Using dot .store is one of the best ways to set up your branding right from the start with a specific and memorable domain name. So you can actually get a dot store domain name right here directly through Shopify, or you can get it through other registrars such as GoDaddy or Namecheap, or you can go directly to www.get.store. So I'll quickly show you how you can get your domain from the dot store website here, which you can get to by clicking the second link in the description. So if I were to click on search for your domain, we can see that we just have to type in a domain right here. So another advantage of actually using a dot store domain name is that many more names are going to be available. So if your brand name is a bit more common, it's likely that the dot com for it is already taken. So using a dot store domain name gives you the opportunity to get the domain name that you want and to have a better and more memorable brand because of it. So we'll go ahead and just type in a demo URL right here and click on search. And then we'll see that the name is available and most names you search are going to be available. And we can see here that it is $29. However, you can actually get any dot store domain name for 99 cents for your first year by using the code CECOM store at checkout. And I'll show you how that works right now. So if we were to go ahead and add this domain to our cart and I click on proceed, and I'll skip past these and we can come here to the checkout and I will remove the existing coupon and put in the new one. And I will apply this coupon right here. And now we can see that we are paying 99 cents for this domain for the first year. And we have the additional $8 for privacy, which you can check off, but I would recommend getting privacy protection for any domains that you get. And then all we would have to do is come down here and click on place order. So if you do choose to get your domain through dot store, GoDaddy, Namecheap, etc., you would just come back over here and click on connect existing domain and type in the domain right here. Click next and follow the instructions and it will connect everything automatically for you. So it's pretty simple to set up. So that's how you set up your domain. And once you've done that, we are pretty much done with all of the initial settings that we need to set up. And now we can go ahead and close this out and get started with the, with the next part of the store setup, which is going to be selecting a theme. So now we just need to click on online store here under sales channels, and it's automatically going to bring us to themes. And by default, we're going to have the newest version of the Dawn theme installed. So currently as of recording this video, the newest version is version 11.0. So in this video, we're going to be using the Dawn themes. That's one of the most common themes that a lot of new merchants are using. But if you do want to use different themes, you can scroll down here and you can visit the theme store. You can see that there's some other popular free themes here, such as Refresh, Craft, and Sense, Origin. And I have separate tutorials on these individual themes when it comes to designing them. If you end up using one of these themes, or you can choose to visit the theme store. So over here in the theme store, you can look through a bunch of different themes. You can choose from different industries depending on what you are selling. And let's say you wanted to check out one of these themes, you could open it up and you could visit the demo store for any of these themes. You can actually see what the theme would look like. So I'm not gonna actually go through a bunch of different themes for the sake of time in this video. However, you can search through the theme store and choose whichever themes that you wanna go ahead and use. No matter what theme you're using, it's going to be applicable to this video because it's pretty much the same when it comes to setting up any theme. It's just some of the elements might be laid out in a different order, but it's pretty much the same process. So we're gonna be using Dawn in this video. And in order to start actually customizing the store, we're gonna click on customize right here. 
And the first thing we need to do once we have opened this up is we're gonna get familiar with the editor. So right here, we're going to have all of the editing stuff on the left side here. And then we're going to have the preview over here on the right side. So if we come up here to the top right, we can see that we're on the desktop preview. We can switch over to the mobile preview by clicking here and we can switch to full screen preview by clicking here. So most of the time you're gonna be editing in the desktop view, but after you do a bunch of changes, it is recommended that you come over to the mobile view and make sure that everything looks good on mobile as well, considering that the majority of e-commerce traffic is actually on mobile. So you definitely wanna make sure that your design looks good on mobile first. And then if we come up here, we can see that this is where we can choose what page we're editing. So right now we're editing our home page. We have all of our different products right here along with different templates. We have collections, collection lists, pages, etc. And we can edit a bunch of different things. And I'll go over some of these a little later in the video, but first off, we're going to start with our home page. And the good thing is, is once you can edit one page, you can pretty much edit all of them because it's pretty much the same exact process. So the first thing we need to do before we edit any of this is set up some of our theme settings. So we're gonna come down here to theme settings. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna start up top by adding in a logo. So I'm gonna click select image right here. And we don't have any images in our source. So we're gonna have to upload one. Go ahead and upload this logo right here. And if you're just starting out and you don't have a logo yet, you head over to a site like Fiverr and you can just search for logo design right here, which you can see is popular and you can normally get a good logo for around 50 bucks. But if you already have a logo, you can just go ahead and upload it in right here, which we're going to go ahead and do. And we can choose to make this logo bigger or smaller. So we're going to make it a bit bigger. So we can see that this looks a bit better here. And then we have the favicon image. This is going to be like a smaller icon version of your logo that shows up right here where the Shopify bag is showing up. So we can see here, we still have this Fiverr tab open. We can see there favicon is this little Fiverr icon right here. So if you have an icon version of your logo, this is where you're going to want to upload it. I don't for this demo store, but I would definitely recommend having an icon version and uploading it right here. So the next thing we have to take a look at here is colors. So if we open this up, we can see that there's going to be different color schemes we can set up that are going to be applied to sections throughout our online store. So these color schemes are essentially going to be used to create the design language that we're going to be using throughout the store. So every color scheme we have, we can apply it to different sections throughout our store here. So this is essentially just where you want to put your brand colors. And you can see by default, we have five. You can add more if you want, but most of the time you don't need more than five. A lot of the times you might only use two or three. So this is just going to depend on how many different color palettes that you're using in your store. So when it comes to using colors, you're definitely going to want to use colors that correspond with your existing logo and branding. So you can get the exact colors by coming over to imagecolorpicker.com and uploading your own logo in here. So we can see I can upload this logo. So you can click anywhere on it and it will get the hex code you can see right here. So when it comes to these color schemes, most of the time scheme one is going to be what's used for like your backgrounds and everything. So we can see scheme one is just a basic black on white. So you can tell which one of these schemes is used somewhere within the theme by just playing around with it. So if I open up this and I change this background to red, we can see that this scheme is being used here on these different backgrounds right here. So a lot of the times you can keep scheme one pretty basic. So a good rule of thumb is to have scheme one just be the background that you typically want for your website. So whatever backdrop color you want for your website and then your text backdrop here. So we can see if I were to change the text to red, we can see that that changes that text everywhere here, but we'll keep that as black. And then we have our button colors, our button labels and our outline buttons. So the difference here is, is this would be an outline button or it's just the outline and the text right here. A solid button would be if this was filled in and I'll show you how you can change that later. So in this case, I'm gonna just use a slight gray background instead of white, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back. So scheme two is going to be used more as an accent, at least that's how I like to use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up scheme two now, and I'm gonna change the background of scheme two to the primary color here of our logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that from here. I'm gonna open this up and paste in this hex code. And you can see that it's not 
showing up in many places yet because it hasn't been assigned, but I'm gonna show you how we can assign this here. So now what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the text color. So we can see we have the text is showing black on here, but I think the text would actually look better as white. So we're gonna change that to white here. So that's gonna be used as the background. And then I want all of my buttons that are on this backdrop to be black. So we'll make these buttons black and then we'll make the button label white and we'll make the outline button. So this white as well. And then I'm going to go back once again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a scheme that's going to allow our buttons to be this blue color if we want them to be the blue color. So I'm essentially going to duplicate scheme one, but I'm going to change the button colors a bit. So I'm gonna open up scheme three. I'm gonna change the background to this gray again. And this time I'm going to change the button background to the blue. And I'm gonna make the button text white. I'm gonna make the outline button blue. And we can see that when changing this, it's actually making this button blue here. So we can see that in this case, this was using scheme three. So essentially what I am setting up with these different schemes is this is going to allow me to make buttons blue. And this is going to allow me to make backgrounds blue and buttons black. So essentially each one of these different schemes is going to be applied differently. So one thing I actually wanna do is change this text to black. And then what I'm gonna do lastly is I'm going to create one more scheme like this, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it have white text in case we want white text here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up scheme four. I'm gonna change this background to the same gray. I'm gonna keep the text as white. Solid button background is blue. Button label is blue. Button label is white and outline button as blue. So this is just giving us a little bit of different optionality right here. So now we have pretty much our base scheme that we're using for backgrounds. We have our second scheme, which is what we can use for changing colors of we have another scheme where we have blue buttons, another scheme where we have blue buttons with white text, and I'm gonna create one more variation. And this one's going to be a black background because for this particular brand, I like to have some black backgrounds because I think that looks better. So I'm going to create one with a black background, white text, blue buttons again, white labels, and the blue outlines. So this gives us a lot of different optionality and it's going to become a lot clearer once we actually start applying these color schemes to our store sections. So I'm gonna click save since we've done a lot of changes in here. And the next thing that we're gonna do is take a look at the typography. So this is where you can actually change the font that you want to use throughout your store. So we have the headings font. So this is going to be for things such as this he big heading right here. And then we have our body font, which would be like the font that's down here. And this is going to be all personal preference. So you can come in here, change, and look at all of these different fonts. And I'm not gonna change the font for the sake of keeping things simple in this video, but if you wanna use a different font that you think better fits your brand, then definitely go ahead and do that. But one thing I would recommend doing is definitely don't use more than like two different fonts. So if you have one font for your heading and one font for your body text, that's fine. But I wouldn't start using too many different fonts because the more different fonts you use, the slower your website's gonna load. So I would try and keep that under control. So once you've set that up, we're pretty much done with these settings. We will be back here later on, but for now we're going to now jump up here to sections. We're gonna actually get familiar with editing the sections here. So we can see that every single one of these sections here corresponds with the section on the site. So if I click on the announcement bar, that's up here. If I click on the image banner, that's right here. And if I click on feature collection, that's right here. And you can drag and drop by clicking these six dots and change the order of anything on the site with complete ease. So we can see that you can do that. You can click on any of these sections, come down to the bottom and click on remove section if you wanna get rid of one. And you can add additional sections by clicking add section here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just start from the top. So we're gonna click on the announcement bar and you can see that whenever we click on a section, we can see it's using a specific scheme. So we can see this one's using color scheme one, but I wanna change it to where it has the blue background and the white text. So I'm gonna change it to color scheme two, and we can see that it switches it to that just like that. 
And this is why it's important to set up these different schemes because we could change it to the black background with the white text, the gray background with the white text, gray with the black text, etc. So this is the purpose of having different schemes because once you set them up, you can just apply them to different sections in your store. So the announcement board is pretty straightforward. If you click on this right here, you can change the announcement text. So in this case, I'm going to just keep it as default, but you can change this to anything you want. Maybe if you're having a sale, you can announce that. Then we have the header section right here. So we can see that right now by default, it's showing the main menu. A little later in the video, I'll show you how we can actually create menus. And then we have the menu type. So we have drop down, we have mega menu, and we have drawer. So essentially the main difference is the drawer is going to be the mobile hamburger menu. And a mega menu is just a larger version of a drop down menu. So this is going to be preference right here. You can choose whether you want a sticky header. So right now we have it on scroll up. So that means we scroll down. And as soon as you start to scroll up, the menu shows up. You can choose to always have the menu show up or you could choose to always have it show up but reduce the logo size or you could choose to just always have it stuck up top and that's it so that's going to be preference i like to have it on scroll up but that's going to be up to you then we have the color scheme here once again so you can see this is the color scheme of the background so if you were to change that you could change that in there and then on any of these different settings, you're going to be edit, be able to edit things such as the margin and the padding. So this is just how much space is between one section and another section. So most of the time, you don't really have to mess with any of that stuff. It's pretty advanced. But if you do want to, this is where you can play around with that. The last thing you can do with the header is you can choose the logo position. So we have middle left. We have top left. We have top center. We have middle center. So that's just going to be personal preference. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it as middle left and you'll notice there's this is only for desktop because on mobile it's always going to look the same once we're done with the header we can come down here to the image banner here and this is where you can add in images so i'm going to go ahead and add in an image right here and if you don't have any images for your store then you can head over to free stock photo websites such as pixabay to get some relevant images here or what is more recommended is to take some product photos or brand photos of whatever it is you're selling. I'm going to go ahead and upload a background image here. And we're going to put this in here. And then we can change the banner height. So we can make it like smaller if we want to. Or we could keep it large. This is going to come down to personal preference. And then we can choose the content position here. So we could change it to different areas just by clicking different ones. In this case, I will go ahead and stick with bottom center. You can choose whether or not you want to show the container on desktop. So that's going to be personal preference as well. And then we can change our color scheme. So let's say I want to change this to this one. So now we have it as black with white text and the blue button. But you could change between different ones to choose which one you think looks the best in your opinion. So that's going to be personal preference. And then you can change your mobile content layout here. So right now we have it as center. So if I were to switch over to mobile, you can see we have center, left, and right. So that's going to be personal preference. And you can choose whether or not you want to show the container on mobile. So right now we can see this is overlaying over the image. But if I click show container, it's going to make it a separate thing down here, which I think in this case does look better. So that's going to be a personal preference as well. So that's how we can add an image in here. And if we were to come up here, we can choose to add in another image if we want, and it would kind of scroll through them. For the sake of time, I'm only going to use one image, but if you want to use another one, you can add in another image right here. And you can change the opacity of the image as well by dragging this slider. So by default, it is at 40 here. So we're gonna go back. And now if we scroll down, we can see that we have a featured collection section which in this particular case, we don't have any products created yet. So we're gonna have to come back to this collection a little bit later on after we create some products. So what I'm gonna do instead is show you how you can add in some additional sections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on add section right here. And then we can see that we have all of these different sections that we can add in to our store. And what you can do is if you highlight over any of these sections, you can see the preview of what it looks like here over on the right. So when it comes to actually designing the home page. You can normally get inspiration from looking at other websites and trying to create something similar. So other websites that have a layout that you like, you can kind of use that layout for yourself and create that layout from these different sections in here. 
So that's going to be personal preference. So I'm going to be using a layout that I've used in a demo store before. And if you do like the layout, then you can use it for yourself. So the first section I'm going to add in here is going to be a multi-column section. And what this is going to be is this is actually going to be a review section. So I'm going to add one more column because we're going to have four reviews. And then I'm going to click on the column itself to edit it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the columns to four. And then we can edit the text here. So in this case, I'm going to change this to what our customers are saying. We can change the heading size. I'm going to make it small. I'm going to get rid of the button. So by getting rid of the button label, that button disappears. But if you want to have the call to action button, you can have that by setting that up right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out and I'm going to click on the individual column to actually edit each individual column. So if, we're, if we click on this, we're editing the settings for the section as a whole. And if I click on one of these columns, then we're editing each individual column. So I'm going to just put in some content here. So I'm going to just put in like a demo review. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to just upload a quick image of stars. So I'm going to use this five star icon here as the review. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the multi-column section and change some of these settings. So first off, I want to change the image. We'll go with square and then I'm going to change the image width to half width to have the review stars smaller. I'm going to change the column alignment to center so everything's centered. And then I'm going to change the background here to none. And I already think this looks noticeably better. So now I'm going to go back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in each one of these additional columns really quick and it's going to be the same process. So I'm going to pause the recording and we'll pick up right after. So I went ahead and filled out the rest of the multi-column sections here. Now we can see we have a nice little review section showing up. So the next section I'm going to add in is going to be an image with text. So I'm going to add this in right here. And what I'm actually going to do is showcase three different products with these image with text right here. So we can see this section has an image on one side and then text, a header text, smaller text, and then a button on the other side. So what I'm going to do is we can click on the section right here. And first off, I'm going to add in an image. So in this case, I'm going to add in a image of the product and then I'm going to change the image height to small. I'm going to change the image width to small. I'm going to change this color scheme to have the black background and then I'm going to back out and we're going to put some content in here now by clicking on the text. So we have the body text and we put in some body text right here. Then we have this button. So this button is going to be a shop now, and this is going to link to one of our products, but since we haven't added our products in yet, so if you did already add your products, you could link to one of your products right here. But in this case, we're gonna have to do that a little bit later, and you can choose whether you wanna change the button to an outline style or the solid. In this case, I'll stick with the solid. And then lastly, I wanna click on this header, and I'm gonna make the header, in this case, the title of our product name. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save these changes really quickly. And for this demo store, we're going to have three main different uh, skincare products. It's going to be like a cleanser, a toner, and a moisturizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase each one of these in one of these image with text sections. But if you're using image with text sections, one of the most common things to do is to alternate the way they face. So let's say I want two more of these. So I'm going to come in here and open up image with text and I'm going to click on duplicate. And I'm going to click on duplicate again. And we can see that this looks okay, but what would look better is if I come over here to the second image with text, which is right here. And I change the image placement to image second. And now we can see that it's alternating and we can see that that looks a lot better. And if we take a look on mobile, we want to see what it looks like on here as well. So on mobile, they're just going to be stacked normal. There's going to be no alternating. So alternating is only going to happen on desktop right here. So now all I would need to do is actually come in here and change this content to match the different products. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and do that right now. So I went ahead and filled out these different sections here and we can see that this homepage is already looking pretty good. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a different type of section. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add in a section. I'm going to add in a multi column and I'm going to add in a rich text. I'm going to put the rich text above the multi column. And first I'm going to click on button and remove this button here. And what I'm going to make this section is going to be like a benefits type of section here. So we're going to be like, why choose us? I'm going to make that small. I'm going to make this large. I'm going to change this color scheme to scheme five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this multi column here. We're going to change it to four again. But what I'm going to use this for is it's going to be like benefit type icons here. So we're going to change this to scheme five as well. So this is essentially going to be in one section. So you can see what I did was is instead of using the heading as the title for this section, I'm essentially using a different section as the title for this because I wanted two different rows of text. And to make it a little closer, I can change the padding here on the top to make this a little bit closer. So this looks a bit more like a title. So I'm going to get rid of the background once again. And now I'm going to edit these individual sections, but I'm going to put a fourth one in here. So this time what I'm going to do is we're not going to have any description. We're just going to have a heading and then we're just going to have an icon. So I'm going to upload an icon here and put this in. And then what I'm going to do is go back to the multi column. We're going to change the column alignment to center. And I'm going to change the image width once again to half. So this looks a little bit better and you could also change it to one third if you wanted it even smaller. So that's going to be personal preference. I'm going to keep it at half. And you can already see where I'm going with this. We're going to have four different icons that show different benefits of our store's products here. And I want to get rid of the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out the rest of these and we'll be right back. So I went ahead and completed this section here and we can see that this looks pretty good. So what we've essentially done is we've combined a rich text section with a multi column section to create essentially a big benefits section right here that is a contrasting split to the rest of the site here. And you can kind of see the theme that we're using with the site, how we have these alternating black backgrounds with white text on top of our standard gray with black text. And then we have our blues coming in as our brand color as the primary highlight here. Obviously, you don't have to follow this exact template. Whatever you do with your site is going to be different personal preference. But this kind of gives you a general idea of how you can use these different things as design elements in your store. And you're going to notice that a lot of the design is actually done ahead of time by just having the content to put in here and knowing how you want things to look. So lastly, I'm going to add one more section to finish up this home page design. And this is just going to be a video section. And I'm just going to call this video section how to apply our products here. And I'm going to select a cover image for the video. I'm just going to use the same one that I used at the background earlier but typically we'd want to link to a video here. So ideally this would be a video actually showcasing how to apply these skincare products that we're selling here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit back and save these changes. You can see that the last part of the homepage is going to be the footer. So if we click on the footer down here, we can change the color scheme that our footer is using. So in this case, I actually want the footer to use the black color scheme because I think that fits with the rest of the theme we have going here. So we're gonna use the black color scheme. We can see that by default, we can choose whether or not we wanna show this email sign up. So if we do wanna have it here, typically you wanna change this text to something like, to give them an incentive to actually sign up. So you can make it something like sign up for 25% off your first order because if there's no incentive, no one's just going to sign up for no reason. So you want to make sure you actually give them an incentive and then you can choose whether or not you want to show different things like your social media icons, region selector, payment icons, etc. 
and then you can choose whether or not you want to show policy links as well but in this case we haven't set up these policies but we're going to set that up a little later so i'm going to go ahead and enable that right now so we're going to click save and we can see that at this point we have completely designed the home page in just about 15 minutes which is pretty cool and you can take a look at it on mobile and we can see that it looks good on mobile as well. So the one thing that we didn't finish was the featured products and we're gonna come back in here and add this in once we actually add products to the store. So the cool thing is, is once you can edit one page, you can pretty much edit them all. The process is very similar. So now we're gonna actually get into editing, adding products. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna come over here to products in the top left and this is where we can actually add products to our store. So if I click on add a product here, we need to go in here and actually put in our product information. So we can put in our product title and we can put in a product description. You can also use Shopify's AI generation here to go ahead and generate a product description for you, which is actually what I did in this case, but I'm taking this text from another demo store I have. And then we can add our product images right here. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna add in the product image and if you have multiple you can add in multiple and whatever is the one shot up here on the left is going to be what shows up first then over here on the right we have our product organization so we have our different things such as product category so by default this is being sorted into cosmetics we can choose to accept this suggestion if this is correct or we can change it to something else in this case this seems correct so i'm going to accept it we can enter in different things such as our product type collections tags etc we haven't created any collections yet but this is where we could add our product to collections but i'm going to show you how to do that next we can add in some tags so in this case i'll just tag it as skincare and then i'll just tag it as cleanser and then we can set our product price here so in this case i could set it at like 12.99 and then if you set a compare at price, this is how you create a sale. So if I were to set the compare at price to say $15.99, then what this would essentially mean is that this would create a sale. So this would be the standard price and then this would be the price that customers can buy at currently. So if you wanna create a sale, that's how you can do that. And then you can choose whether or not you are charging tax on this product or not. And then down here we have our cost per item. Now you don't have to enter this if you don't want. This is just something that Shopify has in here to help you track your profit. So let's say this item cost us $3 on our end. So we can see that at this pricing, our profit is $9.99 and we have a 76.9% profit margin. So this is just a neat tool that kind of helps you keep track of your profit margins, but this doesn't have any impact on the customer's end. So you don't have to enter this if you don't want. Then we can choose whether or not you track inventory. So if you do keep track of your inventory, then you wanna keep this checked and you can choose how much stock you have by entering the stock right here. And then you can choose whether or not you want to continue selling when this product is out of stock. So that's gonna be personal preference. And then you can choose whether or not this product actually has an SKU or a barcode. So if it does, you can click on that and you can put in the SKU right here. So I could just put in a SKU right there. And then you can choose the weight of the product. And this is going to help calculate your shipping rates if you're using calculated rates. So this product, at one pound even though it probably doesn't weigh even close to that and then down here you can choose whether or not your product actually has any variants so this product doesn't but let's say it had size variants so we could say there's a small package and there's a large package and you could add in different options if you wanted to you can add in different things like color etc and in shopify you can add up to three different variables here so in this case, we're going to just stick with one, but if you did have other options, so say you were selling like a shirt and it had different color options as well as size options, this is where you can enter those in. In this case, we're just going to stick with these options right here. And then once you create a different option, you can select how much you have available for each variant. You could say that you have 100 in stock for large as well, and you can change the price. So in this case, a large should cost more than a small because you're getting more. So in this case, I could make the large say $17.99. And then we can just click on done with these variants here. And I'm gonna click save to save these changes. We can see congratulations, we added our first product. And then we could assign specific images to these variants here. So right now, if I had another image for the large, I would assign it a different image. So if you had a shirt with different colors, this is where you put in say a red shirt and a blue shirt image right here associated with different variants. 
And then down here, you can edit your search engine listing. So this is going to be what actually shows up in Google or other search engines if your site is showing up. Now that's its own other topic and would take a while. So I have a separate video on SEO. So I'll leave that linked in the description. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click save. And so that's the process for creating products. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple additional products and then we're going to move on to collections. So I went ahead and created three products here. And what we're going to take a look at now is how to actually add these products to a collection. So we click on collections here and we can see that a collection is essentially just going to be a group of similar products inside of Shopify. So you can think of it as different groups. So let's say you had an apparel store, you could have a collection for like pants, of a collection for shirts, a collection for outerwear, a collection for socks, etc. So they're just going to be groups of different related products. So in order to create a collection, we can just click on create collection right here. And I can just name this skincare, for example. You can add a description to this collection if you want. In this case, we won't. We're just going to keep it very simple and we can choose the type of collection. So you can either have a manual collection, which means that after you click save, you're gonna to have to manually add products to the collection. Now this is fine, but normally automated collections are going to be easier, especially if you have a lot of products and you plan on adding products in the future. So with automated collections, you can choose to set it up based on product tags. So you can choose to set it up based on different variables. One of the most common ones is going to be product tags. So the tags that we put in our products earlier, we can choose to assign certain tags to certain collections. So in this case, if we make our product tag equal to, and we choose one of our tags, so skincare, then this means any product that has the skincare tag is going to be added to this collection. So we'll see this in action by clicking save here. And we'll see that these three products that I assigned the skincare tag to are now all in this collection. So that's how easy it is to create a collection here. And we can go back. And now what I'm going to do is show you how we can add these products and collections into our store. So we're going to come over here to online store once again, and we're going to open up the customizer. And now that we actually have products in our store, we can come down here to this featured collection right here, and we can actually fill it out. So I'll go ahead and give it a title, and then we can choose the actual collection that we want to show. So in this case, I'm going to change this to the skincare collection, and then I'm going to select it and then I'm going to change the number of columns to three since we only have three products in here. We can change the color scheme if we want and we can see that it would change it up like that. In this case, we'll just keep it as color scheme one and then I'm going to click on save. And if we wanted to add products to the home page, you could do that by adding a section here and you could add in, say, like a featured product. And then you could choose this to select the featured product. So let's say we select this here and we can see we've just added a product to the home page. In this case, I'm not going to actually keep this here, but I wanted to show you how you can actually do that. In this case, I'm going to remove this section. And now I'm going to quickly show you how you can take a look at different pages here. So if I were to switch this from the home page to the product page, now that we have products and we open up this default product template, we can see that this is what our product page looks like by default. We have the product page here. We have our buttons and we have our related products right here. Now, if you wanted to customize this product page, you can do so the same way that you did on the home page by coming down here and adding in additional sections. So we could add in a bunch of different sections if we wanted to. You could add in a video of the product. We could add in more of the benefits like we did on the home page, etc. So you can design your product page to be however to look however you want so this is going to be up to you considering it's the same process as the home page i'm not going to repeat the process in this video but i just wanted to show you how you can go ahead and do that and this is also where you can add in specific apps so a lot of the times you're going to be adding in a review app for example to show product reviews down here and i'll get into what i recommend for that later on in the video so now we're going to head back to the home page and we're going to get into adding some additional pages to our store that are essential. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at pages. So we're gonna come down here to pages and we can see by default, we have a contact page. So there's really gonna be five pages that are essentially going to be essential 
for every single store. And those are going to be terms of service, privacy policy, about us, contact, and FAQ. So we can see by default the contact page is already made. So if I were to open this up, we can see the template is contact. And if I were to view this page, we can see that it's just a contact form right here. Now you can customize the contact page by adding some personalization in here, maybe like a map if you have a physical location, etc. So that's going to be up to you. But in this case, I'm going to keep it bare bones for the sake of the tutorial. So in order to add a page, we would just click on add page up here. So in this case, I could add, say, about us. And then this is where you would put in like your brand story. Pretty much just the information that's going to be like, who are you? Why are you selling these products? What, what is your brand, etc. So this is where you're going to put that in. I'm going to click save. And then if we add in another page for FAQ, this is where you can have your frequently asked questions. So you could have it set up like question one is X, and then that would be like, et cetera. And then we could have answer. And then this is the answer. So there's a lot of different ways you can set this up. You can set this up basically like this, just with text of like question, answer, question, answer, et cetera or you can use like different FAQ apps, but this is going to be easier to set up right here. So we're just gonna do it this way. And as far as what to put in your FAQ, this is going to vary depending on what you're actually selling. And it's going to be hard to actually determine what actually to put into your FAQ until you start seeing which questions you start receiving on a regular basis. And as soon as you start seeing which inquiries you're getting all the time, then that's a good sign that you're gonna to wanna to put an answer to that in the FAQ. So some common things that you can put in the FAQ that's going to apply to any store would be certain things like, let's say payment methods. It could be shipping. So shipping could be like shipping times, destinations, etc. Those are some pretty generic ones that you could start out with. And then over time, as you start getting more and more questions from your customers, you need the answers to that into your FAQ right here. So the last two pages that we need to create is going to be the term to service and privacy policy. So we can actually generate these automatically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up settings here in a new tab. And I'm gonna scroll down here to policies. And we can see that we have the written return and refund policy generator here. We have a privacy policy and we have terms of service, shipping, contact, etc. In this case, we're gonna generate our privacy policy in terms of service from this template right here. So if I just create privacy policy from a template, I can go ahead and take all of this and I can copy it. And I can come over here and I can add in a page for privacy. And I can paste this all in right here. And you can see that there's going to be some stuff that you actually have to fill in yourself so we can see you can put in a phone number right here. My email is already showing up here and you can insert your site right here, etc. So you can scroll through here and look through the different locations where you actually need to insert something, but that's only going to take a couple of seconds and it saves you a lot of time to go ahead and just use this generated policy and you can customize it to your site if you need to, if you have specific terms of service that you need to do. So that's the privacy policy. We're going to create another one. And this one's going to be terms. And if we come over here, we're going to generate the terms of service from a template as well. And we're just going to copy and paste that in. Now you can see that we need. So we paste that in right here and you can see that you can insert your business address, phone number, and other information right in here. And you can customize and add different sections in here if you were selling particular products that require that. But we're just keeping it simple for the sake of the video. I click on save. We're going to come back over here and save these in here as well. And now I'm going to show you how we can add these pages to our navigation. So if we click on navigation, we can see by default we have two menus. We have the main menu and we have the footer menu. So we're going to actually open up the store just so that way we can look at these while we edit them. So this is the main menu up here. And the footer menu is typically going to be the one that shows up down here at the bottom, which we can see we have these right here. So. We're gonna open up the main menu and we're gonna add a menu item and we can just choose a link right here and we're gonna choose a page. And in this case, we're gonna add the about us to the main menu. So I'm gonna add that in. I'm gonna click save. 
And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to the footer menu. I'm gonna click add menu and that's where we're, this is where we're gonna add the rest of our pages. So I'm gonna add the FAQ to the footer. And then I'm gonna add the privacy policy to the footer. And I'm gonna add the terms of service to the footer menu right here. And that's how we can set up menus. And let's say, for example, you wanted to create like a drop down. So if I come back to the main menu here, let's say we'll just link to one of these products, for example. So we'll bring this product in here. If I were to drag this under the catalog and drag it to the right, we can see that's going to create a drop down. So if you wanted to create a drop down menu, that's all you'd have to do is nest this page right under that right there. So that's your navigation. It's pretty easy to set up. Then we can come down here to preferences. And this is where we're editing like, so the title and meta description is just going to be the SEO for the home page of your site, which you can edit in right here. I will leave a link to the SEO video, like I said, and link in the description for how to optimize this. But essentially, you're just going to want to put in the name of your site and then a basic description of your site right here. Have our social sharing image, which is just going to be our logo. And this is where we can put in different tracking information. So we have Google Analytics. I have a separate video showing how you can properly set up Google Analytics, which I can leave in the description as well. You can set up our Facebook pixel, which I also have another video on. And then you can choose how you want to select your customer privacy, which is going to be personal preference. This is going to be your password for when you want to make the store public. So preferences is pretty much just setting up your tracking information here. So now we're going to customize our checkout. So this is one thing we haven't done yet. So we're going to come back to online store. I'm going to open up the customizer and I'm also going to come down here to settings and I'm going to click on checkout because we kind of customize it in two ways. So first in the customizer, I'm going to click up here and we're going to come down here to checkout. And this is going to load up the checkout page sometime this year. So now we're looking at the checkout page right here. Now you can't edit this using sections, but we can go into the theme settings and click on checkout and edit some of this information right here. So we can choose a background image if we want. So let's say I were to just throw in an image, for example, just to show you what it would look like. And we can see that it would show a background image up here if you wanted that to be the case. In this case, I'm gonna just keep it simple with no image, but then we can choose to put our logo in here. So that is something I would wanna do. So I can insert the logo in and then we can choose our logo positioning. So right now it's on the left. You could choose left, right, or center. In this case, I'm gonna just keep it on the left and then we can choose our logo size. I'm gonna just keep it at medium. And then we have the main content area where you can also put a background image. So last time we put a background image up here. This time we could put a background image down here if you wanted to, that's up to you. We can change our background color here. So for example, we could change it to the gray we're already using, but that's already over here. So I'm gonna keep this as white. So there's a little bit of contrast. We can change our form field colors from transparent to white. And then we can choose our different accents, etc. So in this case, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that your, your buttons and everything are going to be the same as the rest of the branding throughout your store. So I would just make that the same blue as the rest of the branding throughout the store here. And then I'll just keep errors as red. So those are some basic changes to the checkout. So all you're really doing is adding in your logo and making sure your buttons match the same color as the rest of the store. Then we click on save. And then if we come over to settings, we can see we have some additional checkout settings here. So we can choose whether or not we want the customer to be able to enter their phone number or their email, or just be able to enter their email. So that's going to be personal preference. You can choose whether you want to show a link to download the shop app, and this is where customers can track their order. You can choose whether or not you want to require the customer to log into their account before checkout. I would recommend keeping this unchecked. Then we have customer information. You can choose to require only last name or require first and last name. Normally keep it on first and last, it's just last, it's just kind of weird. And you can choose to have company name. So you can have it as required, don't include or optional. So if you're selling to some B2B customers as well, then you may wanna put it as optional, but if not, you can just not include it. Address line too, so this is like your unit number, keeping that as optional is pretty standard. And then shipping address, phone number, it's pretty standard to keep that as don't include. And then you can choose to your marketing options here for email and SMS. So you can see by default, we have email me with news and offers showing up right here. 
You can also have SMS show up there as well. And you can also choose whether or not you want this pre-selected. So by default, it's not, but you can choose to have it pre-selected if you want. So people would have to go in here and uncheck this if they didn't want to be subscribed to your email list. So that's going to be preference as well. You can choose whether or not you want to enable tipping. And then we have order processing down here. And most of these settings you're going to be keeping as default. And then we have additional tracking scripts you can add into the order status page as well. So now we're going to click on save once you've completed these settings. Then we're going to open up settings once again, and we're going to open up shipping and delivery. So this is where we can actually customize our shipping rates. Now I do have, once again, a completely separate video going in depth on how to create these different shipping rates. But in a nutshell, you have your general shipping rates, which is going to apply to all products. And then you have custom shipping rates, which is going to apply to special products if you have outliers, let's say. You have a bunch of light products and then you have a couple of heavy products like mattresses. You'd probably want them to fall under their own custom shipping categories. So that's what custom shipping rates are for. And then you can set up your things like local delivery and local pickup if you offer that as well. And you can add in different packages you use and calculated shipping rates, etc. Like I said, check out the video in the link in the description if you want a more detailed overview of how shipping rates work, but that's how they work in a nutshell. They're pretty easy to set up once you know what you're doing. Now we're gonna take a look and into apps and how apps can help enhance your store. So sometimes there's going to be other types of functionality that you need in your store that is not available with the base Shopify platform. So this is where apps come in. So if I click on add apps here, then we can open up the actual app store to take a look at some different apps. So like we mentioned earlier, we mentioned a review app earlier. So in this case, I would recommend the looks review app right here. So we can see looks product reviews. I'll leave a link to them in the description down below where you can get an extended 30 day free trial instead of a 14 day free trial if you use the link in the description. So a review app is pretty standard. I actually have a couple apps myself. So if I type in one of ours here and we just open this up, we have three apps here. We have one that allows you to offer wholesale pricing. So if you plan to sell B2B, this is good for that. We have one that lets you run giveaways on your store. And then we have probably the most applicable one that can be used in any store is the easy pre-order app, which lets you offer pre-orders on your store. So if your products are out of stock, Instead of not taking any more orders, you can take pre-orders or you can take pre-orders for products that haven't released yet, etc. So this is probably the one that's going to be, mo be most commonly applicable to pretty much everyone watching this video. So these are going to be a bit more niche depending on the type of store you have. Another good one is Up Promote. So this is how you can set up an affiliate program on your store. So I'll leave a link to this one in the description as well. Up Promote is going to be the best app for affiliate programs. So there's a bunch of different apps that you can use. I would recommend not having like 50 apps on your store because that's normally going to inhibit your store performance, but having like five or 10 apps is normally fine. Another common one is going to be like email marketing. So like you might use like Klaviyo email marketing, for example, that's gonna be another common one. So apps are going to vary depending on the type of store you have, but those are some general ideas of apps you can use. I'll leave links to the mentioned apps here in the description. And the last thing we can take a look at is the plan selection. So if we come down here to select a plan, we'll see that the different plan options will load up here and we can see we have the basic plan the shopify plan and the advanced plan and as long as you went through the link in the description then you're going to be able to get any of these plans for one dollar a month for the first three months so most people are going to be starting out on the basic plan but as you start selling more it is going to be recommended you upgrade to one of these plans because we can see right here the transaction fees go down on these plans so at one point you actually start losing money by not upgrading because the cost of upgrading is going to be significantly less than the cost you're actually paying in additional transaction fees and by not upgrading and upgrading lets you have more staff members etc so pretty much as your business grows your plan is going to grow along with it but with that said most people will be starting out with the basic plan so I would recommend locking in your $1 per month, three month trial. And with that said, that's how you can completely set up a Shopify store from scratch, from start to finish. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel for more videos and I'll see you guys in another one.